Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So now that the fall season is right around the corner, which is generally the, the time of year that I travel the most in, I've been thinking a lot about my camera setup and whether or not it was time for me to make a change as it relates to the way that I operate and the way that I travel to and from locations. I'm always trying to find ways to reduce weight and to simplify my overall workflow and completely switching camera systems is the big change that I've been contemplating recently. And it's definitely not an inexpensive decision, nor is it one I wanna make very often. I've actually only switched systems one time before and that was over six years ago when I switched from Nikon to Sony. So what led me to this decision? Well, I think over the last year, my needs have changed quite a bit as video for this YouTube channel has definitely become a top priority for me and using equipment that puts me in the best position to create the, the highest quality content in the easiest possible manner is of the utmost importance to myself. And some of you may recall that I think uh, maybe a little over a year now, uh, I had picked up a Fuji X-T3 and paired it with a Fujifilm 10 to 24 millimeter lens to use as my main video setup for this channel. It's what I'm filming on right now. And my plan last year was to use Fuji for video and Sony for stills. And specifically this Sony A7R Mark II, a 16 to 35 G Master and the 100 to 400 G Master lens. And I absolutely love this two lens Sony setup. But I did run into a couple uh, issues uh, here and there, uh, one of which is where I would be on location and I wanted to shoot both wide and long at the same exact time. And shooting with two separate systems that are completely separate from one another that can't share lenses made that a rather difficult task to achieve. And I mentioned this in my video last week where I've been working towards creating sets of images as opposed to single images in order to better tell the story of a specific location and looking for compositions within the composition can greatly benefit from having two camera systems that can share lenses and that can run in tandem with one another. So, and, and although that I only had this, this two lens Sony setup, when I would go on location, I would still end up carrying all of this and the Fuji X-T3 and the, the, uh, the 10 to 24 millimeter lens, just in case I wanted to grab some video content while I was on location. And my initial, I guess, solution to this problem that I was having was to simply just purchase a long Fuji lens to pair with the X-T3. That way, if the opportunity presented itself, I could shoot both wide and long with the Fuji and wide and long with the Sony setup and the problem would be solved. But the issue with that would be that I wouldn't have two camera bodies and a total of four lenses, which is going in the completely opposite direction of where I want to be heading. So I was faced with a decision. I could either A, sell the Fuji X-T3, sell the 10 to 24, and take those funds and purchase a second full frame uh, Sony camera body and another wide angle lens. And just go back to using Sony for video and sticking with Sony for stills, basically using Sony for everything. Or I could sell all of the Sony gear and take the money from this and purchase a second Fuji body, a long Fuji lens, and another wide angle Fuji lens. And that's exactly what I ended up doing. And in this video, I wanna share with you why I did that and what I'm most excited about this change, along with what I'm gonna miss about no longer using full frame Sony cameras. So to jump right into it, as far as what I'm excited about with this, so the, the camera system that I ended up going with, so I, I just mentioned, I'm gonna go ahead and sell these three items. And the second camera body I'm gonna go with, or I went with, is this. This is the new Fuji X-T4. And this is the camera that I'm gonna use for video. So this video that you're watching right now is gonna be the last video shot on the Fuji X-T3. I'm gonna use the X-T4 for video. I think this version of the, uh, the new X-T series is a little bit better. Actually, it's quite a bit better for video than the X-T3. I don't wanna run through all the specs, but it's got the, the biggest thing for me, honestly, you know, is it has in-body image stabilization, which is cool, but it's this flip out screen. So I can actually see myself when I'm recording, which I've never had before. If you could actually see the way that I would set up these videos because I, I couldn't see my shot. So I would go behind my camera, hit record, run around, sit here in my frame and just kind of act like I'm talking about something for a minute or two and then run back around, stop the record, play it back and make sure everything was framed up appropriately. And if it wasn't, which it never was the first time, I would just go back and run that same process over and over again. And that would always take, I don't know, five, 10 minutes just to set up my shot for these videos. So to be able to see myself live when I was recording, that's gonna be a huge time saver for me and, and, and something I was really excited about. So that flip out screen was pretty important for me. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted to use the X-T4 as my new video setup. And the X-T3 will become my stills camera. 
moving forward. So um, I mentioned the, the in-body image stabilization, the flip out screen, which is great. I'm moving from the Sony a7 R2, and I know a lot of the issues with the R2 have been solved with the R3 and the R4. Things like the battery life on the R2 is really bad. The, uh, the battery life on the X-T4 is very good from what I'm told. I just got all this kit the other day, so I haven't had a lot of time to play with it. But um, the, uh, the battery on the X-T4 is better than the X-T3, which is another reason why I'm gonna use this for video, because shooting 4K video is much more labor intensive on a battery than just shooting stills. So I'm gonna use the X-T3 for that, another reason why I made that decision. But the size, so that was one of the reasons why I decided to, to leave full frame cameras, because I wanted to save the weight, and I started to think to myself, do I really need a full frame camera? Am I actually using all the, the many benefits of having a full frame camera? And one of the things was uh, the size. So if you compare the sizes of these two cameras right here, they're very similar. If anything, I think the X-T4, the camera body, might be a little bit bigger than the Sony a7R Mark II. So I'm not really saving any size or, or saving any weight by this switch, but the big change is in the lenses. Full frame lenses are, are big. As you can see, this is the 16 to 35, and the wide angle lens that I ended up purchasing, the second wide angle lens, is this. This is the 10 to 24. So this is my second 10 to 24. And this is equivalent to roughly a 16 to 35 on a full frame camera. So this is a, one of my favorite focal lengths to shoot with. But if you look at the size difference here, it's substantially smaller. The Fuji is much smaller, much lighter than the 16 to 35. So I'm definitely gonna be saving weight. I'm definitely gonna be saving room in my bag. I'm already starting to think of a different pack to start carrying because I don't think I'm gonna be needing a 50 liter bag any longer to carry this new setup. So using these smaller lenses is something that uh, I'm definitely looking forward to and I really love the quality of that lens as well. So, um, and the other lens I bought, this is gonna be my long lens. This is the, uh, the Fuji 50 to 140, which is roughly the equivalent of a 70 to 200 on a full frame camera. Now, this is not a 100 to 400, which I absolutely love, but I am thinking about getting the Fuji 1.4 times teleconverter, which I believe will make this equivalent to roughly a 300 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, which is pretty close to the 100 to 400. So I'm pretty excited about that. This is my first um, Red Badge XF lens from Fuji. I'm told this is their best series of lenses. This is kind of like the equivalent of Sony's G Master lenses. So like I said, I haven't had a whole lot of time to play with any of this stuff just yet, but I am definitely looking forward to testing that out as well. And then just the overall image quality, I'm definitely looking forward to that. I've loved the, the images coming out of the Fuji camera. I, obviously, I love the video coming out of Fuji. And over the, the last, I think it's 15 or 16 months since I've had the X-T3, I've ended up reaching for that camera for stills work more and more, mainly because of the smaller size. It's a lot lighter to carry, it's a lot smaller to carry. And a lot of times if I just wanna run out for you know whatever the case is, or just catch a, a quick photo of something, a lot of times I will grab the Fuji just because it just feels a little bit easier to use and it's smaller and less cumbersome to kind of fiddle around with. So those are some of the, the, the main reasons why that I uh, wanted to make this switch. And of course, probably the biggest reason, well, we're not the biggest, but one of the biggest, Fuji cameras, they're just fun to use. And I know you've heard it a thousand times and I don't wanna beat a dead horse about it, but Fuji cameras are just a lot of fun. I love the fact that you don't have to dive into menu systems every time you wanna make adjustments on the camera. So many of those adjustments are right on the camera itself. ISO to shutter speed, you have your aperture ring on your actual, actual camera lenses to change your aperture. And you get that, that just kind of more tactile feedback when you make those common camera adjustments in photography. And I just, I really enjoy that. It's something that uh, I didn't think was a big deal in the very beginning, but over time, I've really come to a, you enjoy these uh, Fuji cameras, with, which at the end of the day for me, the enjoyment part of it all, that's everything. That really surpasses image quality and everything. And if the image quality is fantastic on top of that, that's just icing on the cake as well. Now, as far as the things that I'm going to miss about not using full frame Sony cameras anymore. One of the big ones is the fact that the GM lens lineup. I have become a huge fan of the Sony GM, the G Master lenses. I think these are some of the best lenses in the industry. And I, I haven't used Fuji's, you know, red badge XF lenses much or at all really. So I don't really have a whole lot to compare it to, but the G Master lens lineup, these are the best lenses I've ever used. So I do think I will miss it. If you ask me this in maybe a year, I might not miss it as much, but as far as some of the things I'm thinking of right now, that is something I am gonna miss. 
the extra resolution from cropping. So, or for cropping, I should say. So I don't really print big. So the extra resolution that would come with the Sony camera is not a big deal for me. This is a 42 megapixel camera. The X-T3 and X-T4 are 26 megapixel cameras. And this is kind of what I was talking about earlier. It's like, I don't know if I'm really using that full frame capability to its fullest. I don't know if I'm using all that resolution. I know I'm not using it from a printing capacity. I can easily print the prints that I print now, which I think the biggest is 16 by 20, maybe, maybe a little bigger than that, but I could easily print double that size with these um, crop sensor cameras, APS-C, and have uh, no issues at all. But one thing I will miss is the higher resolution from a cropping perspective. With this camera, sometimes you could take one image and you could crop it into two separate images. There was that much resolution in there. And it's not that big of a deal, but it is something that I'm gonna have to think about when I'm framing up a shot on location is that I don't have quite as much resolution any longer to kind of adjust the crop um, a lot in post-processing. So I'm gonna have to kind of think about that going forward. And then just the, the extreme low light capability that a full frame camera has, specifically Sony full frame cameras. These are very, very good in low light. And not to say that the X-T3 and the X-T4 aren't, but I do believe that the, the larger sensor in this camera will be able to collect cleaner, lo cleaner light than um, the APS-C or crop sensor camera. And but the issue with that is I don't really shoot. I don't shoot a lot of astro and I really don't shoot in extremely dark situations. The darkest situation for me is probably towards the end of blue hour. So I, once again, I don't even know if I'm using the, those extreme low light capabilities of this full frame camera. And then the last and certainly not least thing is the fact that uh, just the extreme dynamic range of this camera. This camera does have a ton of dynamic range and I don't know exactly how to measure the dynamic range of the X-T3 and the X-T4 in stops. I'm sure it's listed somewhere on the web, but I haven't really looked too much for it. But I didn't find myself in a lot of situations where I had extreme highlights in one scene and extreme shadows in that same scene. So I don't even know if I was using the dynamic range to the, the fullest on this camera. And most of the time, if I did encounter that type of a situation, I would bracket that image anyway, or I would use some kind of filter. So I don't really think I even needed that. So those are really the, the main reason why I, I'm leaving the Sony full frame system for the crop sensor APS-C world of Fuji. And I'm very excited about it, I'm sure as you can tell. And like I said, I just don't know if I really needed all of the full frame bells and whistles. I don't know if I was really using them to their fullest. And I could definitely, or I will definitely appreciate the smaller form factor of these lenses and just the overall lighter weight that I'll have to carry on location as well. So before I do wrap up this week's video, I do wanna say just a, a real big thanks again to the sponsor of this week's video, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website needs. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends in page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog post and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you are looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I do hope you enjoyed this week's video. I hope it provided some additional information as to the thought track or the thought process that I went to to determine exactly whether or not I need full frame cameras, can I get away with using APS-C crop sensor cameras and really enjoy the benefits of using this smaller setup and will it, uh, equate to any kind of loss in image quality or anything like that, which I absolutely do not think it will. The only thing that it will equate to is a lighter kit for me to carry around and a little bit more fun to use while I'm on location. And I'm definitely all for that. If you have any questions about any of this, please leave them in the comments section below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And if you did enjoy this week's video, if you could give it that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video and I will see you all next Wednesday.